at last, at long, long last, it is time to talk indoor and arena football. I know I'm very, very late on this, but hey, we got a lot to talk about. So, you know, I might as well get your popcorn ready and let's just talk, you know, things that happened this past week, which, you know, ended up, you know, the week ended on a Monday night. And I was like, I'm, I'm too tired. You know, last night I, I was knocked out sleep. By the time the Idaho Las Vegas game was over. And again, just a lot to talk about. Let's start, you know, let's just talk AFL real quick. Again, more uniforms have been, you know, put out there. The most like blue or black, boring, basic you know, nah type of uniforms. There was a scrimmage, um, a couple of scrimmages that have happened, or at least one, you know, Wichita and I think Salina or somebody it was a scrimmage to happen. You know, it is what it is with that. It's a scrimmage. Not much information is known. Nobody really knows what the score was or anything like that. Blah, 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 blah. Who cares? It's a scrimmage. It doesn't count. Um, unfortunately, because they didn't really put the scores out or anything for that scrimmage. So, you know, can't really say anything about that. But, yeah, um, the AL2 started last week, but I forgot about the Peach State-Carolina game. That ended up being 32-13 Peach State. And of course, both Peach State and Carolina played this well. Actually, no, Pe only Peach State played this week. Carolina forfeited against the Jersey Bearcats, which was very unfortunate. Um I have been in contact with the Carolina Predators, and one thing's for certain, I am trying to get some answers there, so stay tuned on that front. Um, Wheeling, of course, really should be here. They moved down, and they easily took care of business against Steel City 58-0. Uh, Texas Hot Shots and the Dallas Falcons played. Also inside of a soccer plex. So that was 6 644. Um, the outdoor game, which is just unfortunate on all fronts, because these are two teams that are that knowingly and have done this in the past. This is not the first time that this has happened. We've seen it in the past. We've seen it in the past. Go look back. There's stuff like this in the past. But yeah, the Waco. Tornadoes and the West Texas Warriors, formerly known as the West Texas Buccaneers. They played outdoors. The game was unsafe. We're talking the walls were unsafe. The dashboards along the walls were unsafe. Um, it was a rough game to really look at for more than five minutes because there was all sorts of, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, we got the ball, fumble, and, you know, the game was not being played properly. People didn't know what in the world was going on out there, so. Yeah, the whole developmental thing that the ALC is trying to throw around. No, you can't. You can't. You can't take off the red tape and expect me to believe that. You know, when you have a legit team in Wheeling here, and then a bunch of teams that you know are not that great. You know, like Harrisburg beat the brakes off of the Maryland Eagles, eighty-four nothing, and then. You know, Peach State this week got smacked around by Carolina. And, you know, e even the Las Vegas and Kings, who don't have a league anymore, because remember, EFA died, thank goodness. And, you know, they got smacked around by Idaho, the Horsemen. So, yeah, it was rough. It was rough this week for anybody in the AL2. You got. Again, that forfeited game, you know, Jersey was very apologetic. They really wanted to play. Again, the defending AAL2 champions from last season. So, you know, they wanted to get started playing. Uh, but they will play this week, hopefully. And then the AAL2 didn't even put all the scores up for all the games, which makes you wonder, is Waco and West Texas, are, they, are these two teams really in the league? I don't know. Uh, so, yeah, there's that. Um, 
Moving on to the AIF really quick, you know, um, Columbus beat the brakes off of Amarillo. Corpus Christi still unbeaten. They beat Cedar Rapids, who, from what I've heard, is, you know, going through a lot of stuff and everything like that, like player personnel getting switched up each and every week type thing. You know, nobody knows what they're doing type thing. But they're competitive. I'll say that much. They're competitive. Pretty competitive team, you know. Cedar Rapids is. Um so yeah. Oh boy. What about the Great Lakes Arena football? What about what about that? Surely that can't go wrong, right? Well, um, the past couple weeks, the six teams, six or seven, really, I think it's six, have started playing. West Michigan, of course, you know, the Ohio Boone game was a lot closer, but the Toledo game was not so close. It was and then there's another team in the Avengers, the Michigan Avengers, who, and again, everybody except in West Michigan plays in, like, soccer plexes, so, yeah. And the Michigan Avengers have been beating the brakes off of teams. The Detroit Knights have played a game against the Tri-State Bucks, and the Bucks got shut out. You know, there's that. So, Yeah. I'm still not impressed with West Michigan at all. You know, playing against teams in soccer plexes is not not ideal. Same thing with Wheeling, not ideal. But they're gonna they're gonna power. Hopefully, both these teams power through. Hopefully, the GLAF experiment ends because I'm I'm about sick and tired of it. I, I'm I'm gonna beg, I'm gonna ask, and beg and plead and say whatever I need to be whatever needs to be said to West Michigan. I'm gonna sell them. And everybody else, you know, is saying the same thing. Get up and tell them, hey, move up. Wheeling, Wheeling wanted to be in the AIF originally, but then, you know, things got out of hand. I mean, what can you say with John Morris is running the show? But now, you know, different, different guys are running the show. Even the AIF website got, you know, got a little better. It looks like the NAL website now, so. Um, yeah, the only game really that was like super good was the Sioux City, um, Colorado game that was 6 2 61. I ended up falling asleep at the very end of that game. Really good game, really entertaining game. Both these teams, you know, gave it their all. And then in the IFL, honestly. You know, Massachusetts beat the brakes off of Iowa. Tulsa's looking pretty good. They beat Sioux Falls. Arizona's in a blender. San Antonio's in a blender. Quad Cities has like two quarterbacks, everything like that. And that that has not been going too well for them. Uh, San Diego is good, which is crazy to think about. Like the San Diego Strike Force, good team. Crazy to think about. Crazy to think about in the IFL when you have teams like San Diego that are good. Tulsa's looking better. Ray Bay is above 500. I mean, everything is going crazy. But Massachusetts, the uh, Alejandro Benefield injury, you know, we don't know what's going to happen with that. Um, yeah. The Pirates, the Fighters, you know, looking real good, looking like a one two punch. Out in the east, the west, Bay Area, maybe, you know, one of the other Arizona teams, either Naz or Tucson, will go up with San Diego or maybe in the Vegas Nighthawks, who are also looking really good. I mean, this is fun stuff right now, the IFL. Like, you know, August 17th, which, again, I completely forgot the IFL championship was going to be August 17th. Nobody said anything about it, though. Nobody said anything, so yeah, that will be the weekend of the IFL Championship, which means the IFL Championship will be last. So my previous statement a couple weeks ago about the TAL Championship, the Arena League, Tim Brown's League, which is now called, um, their championship is called Arena Mania, which is a definitely an interesting name, but I'll take it. So yeah, that will be the 11th through the 12th weekend. That, that's fun, right? Yeah, uh, we will see how things go. I don't know who else is doing a scrimmage for the TAL. Again, all we know right now is that Duluth will take on the Dallas Falcons. I don't know what the other three teams are going to do. I don't know what Iowa, Ozarks, 
or even Kansas City will do right now. I'm not sure. I I could I could not tell you um, because I haven't gotten that information from either of those three teams. And again, you know, uh, man, it, it's rough. But speaking of things that are rough, um, the last bit of news that we need to talk about is Oklahoma, the Flying Aces. They have a new owner. Um, their game against Omaha got moved from this past weekend to May, which means their home opener will be against a non-league opponent. Um, you know, and they were trying to do things at the Chisholm um, Trail Expo Center and the Stride Bank Center as well. They were trying to do, you know, two different events, but ultimately, you know, um, one arena got booked out. The game, you know, had to be moved. And, you know, people are finding that, you know, there's no dates for Oklahoma on, you know, the uh, at least the Chisholm, um, the Chisholm Trail Expo Center website, at least. There's there's no there's no dates listed there that that that's very concerning. Uh, you know, Richard Davis, you know, who did a fantastic interview um, with Duke on a real football statement. You know, this past week in Sioux City, or at least a week or two ago in Sioux City, he's gone, fired. They call it a mutual separation, but we all know what it is. Um, so there's things going on in Oklahoma. Again, I don't know all the information. I did try and reach out to Oklahoma on Monday, um, but uh, things got a little crazy, you know, Monday. And, yeah. Stuff started coming around. You know, players are posting stuff. Oklahoma players are posting stuff that is not very good, which usually means that something's going wrong. And, you know, when players start posting that things are going really, really wrong, that means something's really, really going wrong. So I hope Oklahoma gets out of this situation very quickly. And... You know, I hope their home game this week looks legit because, you know, there's still been some audio issues in some of these games, but it is what it is with the audio issues at this point. Like, we can't really just talk about them anymore. It's it's, it's over and done with, like, find a new conversation. But, yeah, Oklahoma is one of the big situations of Carolina, of course, um, also had an altercation between a player and a coach. And the bench area, which Coach Negron, you know, and I hope I'm saying his name correctly because I also reached out to him, but he hasn't responded back to my email yet. Hopefully he does at some point. So, yeah, um, and the uh, Cobras had to issue out a whole statement of apology, which is crazy to me, but, you know, it is what it is with that. Uh, yeah. It's it's a interesting time, you know. We're in April. We're in the middle of April now. Things are starting to get a little bit more clear. You got all these soccerplex teams, you know. Now, you know, playing AL two GLAF, um, those teams are playing, and you know, very surprising. And again, uh, teams like the Texas Hotshots had like sixteen guys. That's what that's what the guy. Who runs the hot shots told me he had 16 guys. Dallas had 30. So the fact that they scored 44 and Dallas had 66 is crazy. Um yeah. This this week is going to be uh, it, it's something. So um you see the updated schedule for me. Um the latter half of the week is going to be really, really busy. So I hope you you know stick around, stay tuned. Um, I will be joined uh, by three gentlemen, or rather, I will be joining three gentlemen on Saturday morning. So that's that. Um, at least one interview is confirmed. The other I'm waiting on. And again, this is both AAL2 related, so I'm going to have some questions about the AAL2 uh, to see if it's really you know what it says it's supposed to be. Because I'm having my doubts because this is the same stuff. 
of the old ale that's being going on right now, which is not not a good look for me. Um, and then, you know, um, Sunday instead we'll talk, you know, because again, originally it was going to be Saturday, but I'm like, nah, I need to space up these videos out a little bit, or at least try to. So, you know, you see me post today, just know that it was supposed to be Monday. You see me post on sun this upcoming Sunday, just know it was supposed to be Saturday night. Just just know it, it was supposed to be Saturday, so don't don't worry about it, everybody. Um, that'll do it for me. I know it's a lot to take in from this week, but hey, we had we 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 had to talk about all this. This this is a little there was a lot to talk about, so I wanna get everything as much as I could out there. Um, please do not um, I, 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 I need teams to not play in unsafe conditions. I need teams to not play in unsafe conditions, and I need teams to get their stuff together. We've been saying this for five, six years now, and I've only done this show for four. I've been saying it for five or six years now since I really, really started. Get it together. We got to get it together. So. That'll do it for me. Hope y'all take care. Have a good rest of your week until Friday night, which will be, uh, I don't know, 6 to 8 p.m. Central, somewhere around that time. I'll see you with an interview.